Thank you to Dr. Dredd, our Patreon sponsor for this video, and thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. Hello everyone, my name is Andrew AJT, and today we're going to talk about how to fish dark crabs. This is an amazing fishing method that is very good XP, it's extremely AFK, and it's very profitable as well. One of my favorite skilling methods in the game, and I use this personally to get 99 fishing. I do apologize that I'm sick, by the way, when I'm recording this video, so my voice may sound different. So the only requirement for dark crabs is 85 fishing. However, I highly recommend having the Wilderness Elite Diary done, which gives you a faster catch rate. So the skill requirements for this diary are really not that bad. I'll put them up on screen. If you already have the diary completed, I'll put a timestamp up on screen where you can skip to the actual fishing. But if not, I do want to give you some advice on how to boost for these. So most of them are pretty easy to boost for, except for mining and smithing. Those are by far the toughest requirements, so I'll show you how to get them using spicy stews now. So for the diary, I trained my smithing to 86 from the blast furnace using gold ore, and I got 80 mining at the time with the motherload mine. So you really want to get your spicy stews with a wily hellcat. So after the rat catcher's quest, you can bring an overgrown cat or an overgrown hellcat to this NPC. I'm not even going to try to pronounce the name, her right here. And you can talk to her and say, can you train my cat? And she will give you a wily hellcat in return. So you're going to need orange spice for smithing and brown spice for mining. And so the way this works is you go to the basement here in Edgeville and you just use your cat on this curtain. You can insert the cat. And the way this works is the cat will basically fight this hell rat and once you win you get a full shaker of spice and the cat if it's a overgrown wily hell cat will win like nine times out of ten but if it's ever losing and it looks like it's about to die like if it gets to less than a quarter hp i recommend just running away here and that'll reset the fight and your cat will be okay and then when you restart this fight your cat will actually be full hp and it'll reset. So I would recommend collecting a whole bunch of each spice, maybe a full inventory's worth of maybe half and half. So making the rune scimitar with boosts is pretty tricky to be honest, but there is some tips you can use to make it a little bit easier. So the whole thing can be done in segments, so you can actually do the smithing and the mining parts in separate trips, and you also don't need to actually mine the coal yourself, you just need to mine the two runet ore which is somewhat difficult to do in one boost, but I'm going to show you how to do it here. I highly recommend the Preserve Prayer because it means the boost is going to be longer, and I recommend boosting some other stat like Attack because you'll know when the boost is going to reset. So because you need to mine two ores, you need to actually kill two golems, and they don't stay down forever, so I'd recommend half killing them. So when you're finally getting that boost, which I did here, luckily I can actually mine this first runet ore, which takes a little while, and then once I get that, I can finish this guy off with a DDS, and then hopefully manage to get this second runet ore just in time here. This is at three times speed, so you can imagine how long it takes, and there we go. That's the only thing we need to do for mining, just the two ore. If you really have trouble with this, you could get 81 mining to require only a plus four boost, or you could get 82 and then use the dragon pickaxe spec, which is 100% consistent. I recommend using super restores if you find that your stats are being lowered too often. And the smithing part is fairly easy. The only part that's tricky about it is you need to bring a lot of coal with you and those two runet ore. So you can only bring a few stews per trip. Once you get the boost, you need to smelt the two runet bars and then make the rune scimitar with them. And there you go, that's the hardest step of the diary done. Once you complete it, I do recommend getting multiple wilderness swords because there is no limit to how many you can have. and they're a really helpful item. So once you have the diary completed, you're ready to fish. So this is the exact gear setup I use, which I'm going to show you, and then I'll talk about some alternatives. The Dehide is highly recommended for mage defense. Phoenix Necklace is extra HP, basically. Blessing, Free Prayer. The Serp Helm is pretty important because it keeps you from being venomed. If you don't bring this, I recommend Anti-Venom. Bring a good free cape and gloves and boots. These are some good ones for defense. You could bring rune boots as well if you don't have the Fremnic boots. The Ring of Suffering is a good choice because of the mage defense. The Din's Bulwark is a very good item because it gives you insanely good defense all around, although it doesn't give magic defense anymore. So as far as substitutions, some people bring a ZGS and they freeze PKers and log out under them. I don't recommend this because of skull tricking, but it's an option. 
So you could also do this, something like that, because the Staff of the Dead spec protects you from melee for about a minute, so that's kind of helpful. You could bring an Ellie if you got one, or a Crystal Shield. You could do a Crystal Shield and the Wilderness Sword, and this actually saves you an inventory space because you don't need the Wilderness Sword in your inventory anymore. But I think all these options are not as good as the Din's Bulwark, although you don't necessarily need a Din's Bulwark. It's just a nice item to bring. Pretty much any of the items I'm wearing can be substituted out for something different. Just make sure that your items kept on death is only protecting three important items. So even if I get smited and die with protect item off, I'm not risking anything. Do not bring a fourth valuable item. I almost forgot to mention the Ring of Wealth imbued is a very, very good option because it gives you double chance of glue bottles, which is good for more profit. And if you're going for the Bloodhound, and this is very cheap, you can buy the Ring of Wealth and the Imbue Scroll from the GE. So the less items you have in your inventory, the more AFK the fishing will be because you won't have to note the crabs as often. But having more items doesn't really affect the XP rate because noting doesn't take very long. It's just more interruptions. So I bring very little food because I have a lot of experience tanking PKers and I'm very high level as well. So I actually recommend most people bringing maybe an extra brew and angler. This is really the bare minimum. So you need a lockpick for escapes, the slash weapon for the webs. I recommend 1000 dark fishing bait. And even if you have the diary done for the free entry into the arena, you need 50,000 coins to note 1,000 dark grabs. You can bring 500 bait and 25k if you want to bank more often, because banking the dark grabs doesn't actually take very long, but I think 1,000 is a good amount. If you want to bring some extra prayer, you can use the Ancient May spec on a combat dummy, and this will basically give you a little bit of extra prayer, which you will have with you until a PKer forces you to use it. So once you're ready, pick a random world. Definitely don't pick a skill total world and turn your attack options on hidden and head over to the edge lever here. This is the fastest way to get here by far. So run up north here, equip your sword. And so it's good to keep some quick prayers on. So I like keeping the pray melee prayer on, also protect item and augury if you have it, preserve because why not? And maybe even rapid heal you could use and if you don't have Preserve, you can use Mystic Might and Steel Skin. So whenever you're being attacked, you can quickly go to these prayers. And you'll have the Prey Melee in case you're getting Rush and also the Augury. So it's good to have some maybe hotkeys if you want for these gates. So you can leave the gate at any time. But when you come in, you have to press the one key or the yes there to enter quickly. So the great thing about this is the spots never change. They are always the same, which is amazing. So you have a couple of choices as to where to fish. You can fish here, which gives you more time to react and log out to PKers, but I don't like doing that because if you get frozen here, you have a longer route to the door. So if you fish here, you're very close to the guy who notes the fish, and you're a little bit closer to the door as well. They fish fairly fast with the diary, around monkfish and lobster speed, which is very fast considering they give 130 XP per catch, which is more than sharks, angler fish, monkfish as well and they're worth 1200 coins each right now which is insanely good i mean you can see i'm fishing these fairly fast and because the spot never changes it's insanely afk so i recommend turning on the middle game sounds because when you have a full inventory you're going to hear a little bit of a sound and that'll alert you that your inventory is full so once you hear that sound all you have to do is use a crab on the npc here and you can note them and you can hold down the one key if you want to speed this up. And you can rinse and reset. And one inventory here is worth 23000 alone. Let me show you what you can get from one hour. So overall in one hour I got around 45000 XP or a little bit under that. Although it wasn't a perfect hour so that's still quite good. And we got 376 Dark Crabs with 99 Fishing. And the Rada's Blessing which gives you a few extra with no extra experience. And that's actually not the accurate price in the price checker if we sell them on the GE we get over 500k because these do fluctuate in price quite a bit but they have always been a consistent money maker as long as they have been around so super good profit super good experience super afk there's also a decent chance at a pet as well so you really can't complain these are overall the best fishing method in the game in my opinion so the escape from pkers is really easy and if you have the middle game sounds on you'll actually hear right away when you're being attacked so Basically, you want to turn your quick prayers on and make your way to the gate. 
and having augury and stuff on makes it less likely to be frozen. Now, if you're frozen at this gate, you can actually keep going inside and outside the arena to save yourself some attacks, although unless the PKer is running out of coins or doesn't have the experience, you shouldn't be able to really log out. Make sure you drink your restore after brewing to keep your mage defense high, and once you pick lock this gate and get in here, the PKer will usually not follow you because unless they have a huge team, it's really not worth pursuing you in here because it's really hard to get any attacks in with the axes. They would need a lot of people. But if they do have a team and they come in here, you can actually close your client and you'll be X-logged within about a minute. So you'll be totally logged out even if you're in combat. Although it is possible if they do have a huge team to kill you. But the split, if they did that, would be so low that it wouldn't be worth their time. But just keep in mind with everything in the wilderness, only risk what you're willing to lose. PKers are actually not that common at Dark Crabs. It's a huge misconception. I mean, your luck might differ, but I didn't really see that many PKers when I did 99 fishing here. You can actually cook some Dark Crabs if you don't want to bank, although usually it's safer to just bank. If you want some more detail on how to survive in this area and also just tips for surviving in the wilderness in general, I'll link my wilderness survival guide in the description and in the end screen. It goes into a lot more detail than I have time for here. So that is going to do it for this video. If you have any questions, just let me know. Please like the video if you enjoyed and if you found it helpful. This is a really great method, so hopefully more people can be doing this now. You can subscribe if you haven't already and hit the bell icon to get notifications whenever I upload. You can join our clan chat in game, Andrew AJT 62 We could always use new members there. You can join my Discord server down below. You can follow me on Twitter down below, and I'll follow you back if you play RS. And you can also support the channel on Patreon with the link in the end screen if you're feeling generous. Thank you all so much for watching. And I'll see you guys next video. If you have any suggestions for the next guide, just leave a comment.